Hi there, this is Solid Children from Solid Children Films and welcome to another double take video. And the subject of today's double take is the actor Calvin Lockhart who I think is pretty underrated. You probably recognise his face without necessarily knowing his name. Um, he started off in television um, and then he did a few films in the 70s, two of which I'm going to talk about, and then he went kind of back to television, then ended up in a few interesting films. So the two films I'm going to talk about is 1974's Beast Must Die and 1970's Cotton Comes to Harlem. Like I said, he started in television and then he did some films in the 70s and then he did, he was in Dynasty for a period um, in the 80s and later on in his life he appeared in Coming to America and had appearances in a couple of David Lynch films, Wild at Heart and Fire Walk With Me, but probably his most famous later um, performance was as King Willie, the head of the voodoo, the Jamaican voodoo gang in Predator 2 and of course he has the famous rolling the bones scene with Danny Glover in the alley um, in Predator 2 when he says um, you can't kill what can't be killed you can't see what can't be seen. Um, apologies to Galvin Lockhart for that terrible accent. Um, but these films are from the 70s, when he was obviously a younger man. Um, we'll start with Cotton Comes to Harlem, which is a lovely little black exploitation, directed by the wonderful Ozzie Davis and co-written by the wonderful Ozzie Davis, who is more famous um, for his acting career. Um, and it is about a um, reverend, played by um, Calvin Lockhart, called Reverend Deco Malley, who has a program for Back to Africa that he runs in Harlem and people pay money to essentially get back to Africa but in the middle of his rally there's a robbery and $87,000 worth of um, people's investment gets stolen and it transpires it's been hidden in a bale of cotton thus the title and O'Malley the two policemen Gravedigger Jones and Coffin Ed Johnson, who are fantastic themselves and have lots of wonderful one-liners, um, get involved with the Mafia and the police force itself, trying to find um, this money, because Deco Malley is actually a crook and he intends to keep the money and move on from city to city, exploiting... Um, poor black folks which obviously grinds the gears of Gravedigger Jones and Coffin Ed um, and Lockhart really plays him you know with a strut and he has a hold over the audience because um, he is a preacher and he does the classic um, preacher type stuff um, but in the end he's essentially just a crook trying to exploit um, people's dreams. He dresses lavishly and drives big cars. Um, there's one scene um, which you can see in one of the pictures in this video 
Um, he almost looks like Count Dracula as he's sucking the life's blood or money um, from his own community. Um, at one point, one of the cops actually asks him, you know, you've got these people eating out your hand, you know, they would do anything for you, um, so why do you have to, like, rip them off? Um, it's a wonderful f- performance um, by Lockhart. Again, he's got a swagger, he's got a lure, you can see why people um, react to him and follow him um, and hang on his every word. But he can also be a nasty piece of work and pretty much a, a petty crook who of course gets his comeuppance. And the second film is The Beast Must Die, which is one of my favourite films. It has I have a huge soft spot for it, um, even though it is terribly flawed, but it certainly deserves another look-see and possibly another version done of it. It does have flaws, but it's got so much to like about it. It opens with um, Calvin Lockhart being hunted um, through the woods, and he's on CCTV, there's microphones on the ground and in the trees, and Anton Differing is giving orders to people in helicopters um, as they close in, um, and he gives the kill order, and Calvin Lockhart kind of bursts into this huge lawn where people in the far distance in this big country house are having a meal and he's shot and he falls onto the lawn um, and they all come running um, in shock and excitement but of course he's shot with blanks because he's actually he owns the mansion and he's testing out his surveillance equipment so already it kind of side foots you because you think it's a kind of riff on the most dangerous game um, man hunting man or you think it's the kind of great white hunter but it actually turns out that the black guy is the hunter which again is a nice twist it's got a fantastic opening score by the way it's really 1974 um, and then there's a great introduction sequence where Calvin Lockhart's character Tom, who is this rich guy who spends his time hunting anything that moves, pretty much. He introduces the guests to each other and then proclaims that one of them is a werewolf. So he's actually hunting a werewolf. So some of his guests include Peter Cushing, of course, who's an, an amicus regular. Um, he plays a Swedish professor um, with an accent that's a little bit wobbly at times. Um, so he's a werewolf expert, so he can give us the exposition on how to hunt a werewolf or what kills a werewolf. You also have the wonderful Charles Gray, who's the narrator from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, the voice of Jack Hawkins after Jack Hawkins lost his voice box, and many other films and he is suitably droll and has a couple of nice one-liners as Charles Gray is prone to do. Um, like I said, Anton Differing is the surveillance expert. He watches and cameras from the attic, keeps an eye on things. Um, and a very young Michael Gambon plays one of the guests. Now all the guests have something in common that when they They've had experiences in their life where people around them have died in gruesome ways with their throats torn out or whatever. Um, and one of the guests, <coughs> excuse me, one of the guests admits while he was a student doctor of eating raw human flesh just for um, a laugh. But Calvin Lockhart is very suspicious, so he is pretty much suspicious of everybody. Um, 
and he gets more and more kind of um, crazed and laser focused and it doesn't matter about how his wife thinks about how things are going as he alienates all these guests um, with witty one-liners so again it's got a lovely premise it also has a werewolf break so about an hour and a bit in the action actually stops and you get 30 seconds with a countdown timer uh, with a clock on screen 30 seconds to guess who the werewolf is which is quite a nice little um, gimmick Um, the main flaw with the film is it's a werewolf film but the werewolves aren't very authentic or scaring or scary Um, they're essentially dogs with lots of extra fur stuck on them Um, so that's kind of where the film does kind of let itself down a little bit Um, but if you can forgive it for that there's a lot of nice moments originally some of the guests try and leave Um, again they're out in the middle of nowhere Um, they leave and then he tries you know the candles holding a silver candlestick with wolf bane in the air and other things there's actually it's quite interesting because there's actually a scene that almost prefigures the blood test from the thing john carpenter's the thing with a silver bullet in the mouth so they go around each person to put a silver bullet in their mouth because if they're the werewolf um, they won't like it much and there's another scene which is a kind of riff on the motion sensors from aliens Um, because there's a nice scene where there's a perimeter around the house that's tripped by sensors and something passing through a sensor so um, Calvin Lockhart's character gets distracted by this trip and goes out into the the woods to try and hunt the creature and of course the creature comes back towards Anton Differing and again they do the thing of the red dots coming closer and closer and pretty much going that's in the grounds that's in the house Um, so that's very effective so for me there's a lot to like in The Beast Must Die Calvin Lockhart is fantastic in it Um, he wears rather snazzy outfits and has a nice um, PVC hunting um, jacket so he kind of gets more and more zealous about this hunt and as um, the bodies start building up he gets more and more frenzied Um, he's just super cool um, with his moustache and smoking a cigar Um, and these really are two lovely performances by him two different kind of performances his performance in The Beast Must Die you know he's unflappable Um, he's super cool um, you can see his kind of bloodlust rising and his frenzy rising as he gets closer to his quarry. Um, it also throws in some nice red herrings, um, including a huge red herring. When you think you've kind of worked out who the werewolf is, obviously there's much pleasure to be had after you watch it once. You can go back and watch it knowing who the werewolf is and you can kind of watch them throughout the film and see if they give you any clues away Um, I think this was near the end of Amicus um, which is a shame because they gave Hammer films um, a good run for their money again it's flawed, the werewolf isn't great Um, and there's a couple of well, there's a kind of car chase sequence when somebody wants to try and escape, um, which maybe goes on a little bit too long. But overall, the vibe, the the kind of creepy mansion, the wonderful dialogue between all the characters, 
because um, there's some really good actors in there. It's got a 70s ending, which if anybody watches films regularly will know what I mean by a 70s ending. Um, and it's just a little gem. So, thanks very much for watching this episode of Double Take. And hope you now know who Calvin Lockhart is if you didn't before. And hope you check out some of his films. Because he is an interesting actor. And hopefully we'll see you again for another video. Again, leave comments below whether you've seen Cotton Comes to Harlem or Beast Must Die, or, or both. Um, and hopefully we'll see you again. This is Solitary Ruin saying farewell.